right? We're going to be looking at question one. And uh, looking at question one, we're going to be... One point one point one. Okay, we're looking at x squared minus four x plus three equals zero. X and x. What are the factors of um three, for example? Okay, we're just recapping on basic notions. So here it's minus three minus one. Correct. Okay, so um and then x is three or x is one. Okay, these are very basic. And we are looking at this paper. Connect it to decimal places. You're supposed to store 5x squared minus 5x plus 1 equals 0 to two decimal places. Then we start by saying x equals 2 minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. <clears throat> minus what is b? Is minus 5 plus or minus. <clears throat> Okay, the b is minus 5, you square it, minus 4, the a is 5, and the c is 1 all over twice a. Okay, what is our a? Um, five. Our a is exactly 5. Thank you so much. Okay, this is... Very, very easy. Okay, if you simplify all these, I know that you understand this, it's, it gets down to plus or minus the square root of five, all divided by 10. Okay, so now when we solve this, um, you then it will have five plus the square root of five out of 10. So x is five minus the square root of five out of 10. Right, so uh, we're able to get this one here. And then what are the answers here, which means therefore x here. The same is so use a calculator for this. I know that this is not difficult at all, but I'm just recapping so that you actually can get a feel of some of the basics here. And therefore you um, do this one here. And when you do this one, um, the five plus is going to be zero comma seven two, approximately. So this one, um, zero comma two eight. Those are the two answers. Or we have solved 1.1.2 for um, to two decimal places there. Okay, so we continue. one3 Okay, so for purposes of the exam, it's very important that you're able to um, also deal with, well, we're moving to functions quickly. Okay, I um, want to uh, deal with the factors of this. What are the factors of this? So the factors of this would be greater than zero. This factors of x squared are x and x. Factors of minus 10 are minus five and what? And plus two, right? So in which case, therefore, you'd have the critical values. Right, so... Um, The critical values are x5 uh, oh, and x equal to minus 2. In this case, you're going to use two methods. Uh, this is um, the usual because it's positive, so it has a smiley face. Right, so there's a smiley face. And then, or if you don't do this, if you do this, or you're going to use the number line, do this so you're going to use this or the number line. Um, then you have x here, uh, this is x here. Okay, so um, at this point, uh, you'll put uh, minus two there, you'll put five there. You'll put minus two there, you'll put five there. Right, so because uh, uh, this is greater than zero, um, where is this uh, graph greater than zero? Okay, so you analyze that um, and realize that this graph is greater than zero um, here. 
when it's above is greater than zero when it's above. Right, from this shape, uh, this smiley face, we're going to see that x is smaller than minus two or x is bigger than five. Or if you don't want to do that, you can use a completely different method um, and use the number line. The number line, therefore, where is this greater than zero? Okay, this number line will therefore demonstrate that it is uh, it's going to have a, a couple of signs here that you're going to have, uh, it's going to be positive there and it's going to be positive there and it's going to be negative there. How do you see these signs? So these signs, you just uh, pick random numbers, a number bigger than five, you plug it into the equation. A number bigger than five, you plug it into the equation. So how do we do this? Right, you would uh, say, um, let, let x be seven, because the number seven is bigger than five. And then you take x minus five and into x plus two, you plug in the seven minus five, seven plus two, which is two times nine, which is what? Which is 18, and 18 is a positive number. You do that here, you're gonna get a positive and and, 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 and so on. Get a positive there and uh, etc. cetera. So, um, I've already put the signs in circles at the bottom of the of the number line, so which means therefore this is going to be greater than zero here. We're interested in what is positive, so uh, we're going to move in the direction direction of the positives. Um, the positives, um, um, we can see they are actually uh, yeah, please. All right, yeah, okay, that's fine. I'll see you in, in one minute now. Okay, one minute. Please come again. All right, all right. Yeah, that's one minute now. Okay. Right. So um, um in this this case also you would see that x is less than minus two or x is bigger than five. Okay. So in which case, therefore, uh, these answers are the same. So you can use either the smiley face or you can use uh, which is the shape of the parabola, or you can use the what? You can use the number line there. Okay, there are many ways to do this. Right, so if you look at, uh, so this one is done. Now, if you look at, yes, please. All right, um, I'll be with you just now. Let me just, uh, so we're gonna, we're trying now 1.4. Uh, uh, you're gonna give me the answers in one minute. Uh, just try it there in one minute, and then um, I'm coming back now. Yes, my dear. Yeah, thank you, thank you, my dear. Sia Piranjan, my dear. Sia Bonga Kud. Yes, she has to stop. So, let's go to class. Yes, I did. Because we try to get 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 yeah, that's the thing. So, but it's about topic, isn't it? All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you, my dear. Thank you, my dear. Um. Hello, Larry. Uh. Um. Waruna. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, sorry, you're still here. Uh, my apologies because I just went off. Of a minute. Was, somebody needed my attention. All right. Now, if you look at uh, the next thing, um, here this one. Um, right. So this one is uh, very very easy. Right. So you look at this, uh, which is three the square root of x is equal to x minus four. Okay, that's the given question. We need to solve for x. Right, to solve for x at this point, uh, we need to just square both sides. So we square the left. I'm just recapping on some of these basics. Um, so I'm gonna give you a full paper to to, to try and then you will submit to me the, the attempt. You square um, the three, you get nine, and you square the square root, you get x, right? So here you use the FOIL method because the x minus four, you can write it like that, okay? Um, let me just uh, expand this. So you square the x. x by minus 4 is minus 4. x by 2, which is minus 8x. Uh, plus what? 
plus 16. So this is x squared minus 17x plus 16 is equal to zero. Okay, so in which case, uh, therefore, you continue to um, factorize these. What are the factors of minus 16 or oh, plus 16 that give minus 17? Oh, they are minus 16 minus one. So x is 16 or x is one. Right, so now which one is the solution? Um, we check the solution. We check x equals 16. Um, we must check the left-hand side. Um, because we every time after squaring both sides, you must check the answers. So you check the 3 the square root of x, you check 3 the square root of 16. What is the square root of 16? Is 4. 3 by 4 is 12. Now you check the right-hand side. I'm just uh, sharing some of the skills here on our exam mastery. So um, obviously this one here you have uh, for the 16. Okay, so you put 16 minus 4. What is 16 minus 4? It's 12. Okay, so in other words, 16 is okay. Okay, but we're not done yet. So we're also going to check x equals what? 1. For x equals 1, we're going to check the left-hand side. The left-hand side is 3 to the square root of x. 3 to the square root of 1 is 3. The right-hand side is x minus 4. What is x minus 4, for example? Right, so here it is going to be x minus 4, which is 1 minus 4. 1 minus 4 is minus what? Is minus 3. Okay, but obviously you can see that here is... Uh, minus three and three and then um um you can see uh, that uh, this one is not applicable so this one is applic is not applicable and the only applicable is that one so the one that is not applicable is also referred to as inadmissible so in other words um that one is not applicable and th th this terminology we use uh, we can refer to that as uh, in in uh, admissible Okay, you can say it is inadmissible, that one. Okay, so we're done with uh, that one. So we move on to um, 1.2. Let's uh, practice some small chance equations after this. Okay, right. So how do we deal with small chance equations and how to solve equations simultaneously? We're going to begin by looking at the two equations and uh, make sure that we understand the small chance equations here and to be in a position to um, solve this and so we have three x minus y equals two and then you have two y plus nine x squared equals minus one All right, so what is this? So you can easily um, solve this, but you just make uh, y the subject in one of the equations. So we're gonna make y the subject in the first equation. Right, in the first equation. Right, looking at, uh, for instance, uh, the first equation, you make y the subject. So moving y to the other side and moving two to the other side is gonna be y equals uh, 3x minus 2, and then it is 3. So what you do is uh, you put, you put 3 into, you put 3 into equation 2. All right, so if that is the case, uh, then you have 2 into um, 3x uh, minus 2 plus 9x squared equals minus 1. So this is exactly 6x minus 4 plus 9x squared is equal to minus 1. What is this? Well, this is exactly 9x squared plus 6x minus 3 equals 0. Divide through by 3 and then you get 3x squared and here you divide by 3 you get 2 divided by 3, we have minus 1. Right, so this is what we get. Right, so we get the factors of this. Uh, what are the factors of this? 
um, of 3x squared, well, we know that 3x and x, and the factors here are 1, 1, you put minus plus. From which you're able to see that x is 1 third or x is minus 1. Okay, um, now we use the other equation. Equation 3 is so for using, using equation 3. All right, equation three is the equation that says uh, y is equal to three x minus two. You plug in the one third, so is, you put one third here. You put one third here, minus two. You put uh, minus one, minus two. So here, um, you multiply through by the three, it becomes uh, one minus two, which is minus one. Okay, uh, here you put uh, minus three, minus two, and it's minus five. Right, so these are the answers. These are the answers. So what are the two answers? All right, so the two answers are the following. So this is the answer for X, and this is the answer for another X, and this is the answer um, for y, and this is the, also the value of y. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is to look at to, to solve 1.3. And 1.3, now, we are dealing with something that is is very, very important for us to focus on. Right, in 1.3, we are looking at the this particular equation here. And we are dealing with um, two equations, and we need to solve. Okay, let's see what we what we are getting here. Right, so in 1.3, 1.3, right, so in 1.3, we have the following. Right, we have that these two equations you need to calculate without use of a calculator, the expression there. All right, so let's continue with this. But we have uh, uh, a little trick there, okay, because now you need to convert the three to the nine x to something, right, so, um, you need to just to be a little bit creative. Okay, you need to be a little bit creative. So let us do this. Right, we have been given three to the nine x, which equal to, which equal sixty four. So you have three to the three x. You raise it to three equals four to the three. Oh, uh, three to the three x uh, is equal to four. Okay, so we have these results. And uh, the next thing is we're gonna have another result. What is the result? Okay, this is P is equal to 64. And then now you can write these differently. So you can be able to take the square root. Right, so you can be able to take the square root of this, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if this is true, what else can this be? So now you can decide to apply the square root both left and right. So you'd have the square root of 64, and here you can have the square root of 5 um, with a p like this. Okay, so the square root... Um, can do what I've done here. Okay, what is the square root of 64? We know it's eight and this is the square root of five and this one is the square root of P. Okay, right. Now, what is this? Um, we're in business now, we just need to simplify what has been given to us. Okay, what has been given to us. And so, <clears throat> so it follows therefore that we can write in a different color. We can choose blue. So this is the following, three. X minus one, square root of five, and then you raise square root of P. Square root of five is square root of P. Okay, what is this now? So this one you can write as three to the power three uh, x uh, minus three. You divide everything by 
d square root of 5 square root of p. Uh, which is 3 to the power 3x, you divide everything by. Can you solve any? Square root of p. So you stop. Um, what does this? What is three to the power three uh, x? It is four. And then we have that uh, you have twenty seven here. What is five? Uh, the square root of five and that the square root of five and that is the same as what? The square root of five and that is the same as eight. The square root of five raised to the power p is the same as eight. You simplify everything here. And the result is 1 over 54. And this is what they wanted. 1 over 54. 1 over 54. 1 over 54. So that is the result. Okay. Right. So the next thing now, we're going to proceed and, do, and solve more problems. And so we continue to solve. Um, the next question. Right, uh, they need to solve the next question. Let's continue. Right, so here we're doing a question two. Is your load shedding at 10? You know, I've already had my load shedding. You have already had it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> right, because I need to check, and I'm, I'm suspecting that mine is going to be a ten. Just anyway, obviously we're still way far from that, but just need to know. Um, right. Obviously we're looking at question two now. I'm just uh, looking at. I think that um, it will happen at ten, so so that I'm prepared. Before the time, I can just, uh, because I can either skim beyond that and discuss a couple of more things. Uh, yeah, because it's going to be from 10 to 12 midnight. Okay, that's fine. We are aware. Right, so let's continue um, and solve more, 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 more problems now. So looking at question two now. Um, to, uh, yes. Okay. Given the quadratic sequence, this one, write down the next term of the sequence. Okay. Write down the next term of the sequence. What is the next term? Right. So we're going to start uh, with this because it's a quadratic sequence. We can easily uh, write the terms. Okay. So you have uh, two, you have three, you have 10, you have 23. Okay. What is the difference here? Is one here it's seven, there is thirteen. What is the difference here? Seven minus one is six. There is the thirteen minus seven is six as well. Okay. So you know that the second difference will be six. And then if you add the thirteen plus six gives gives what? Gives nineteen. Right. And so nineteen plus twenty-three is what? It's exactly forty-two. You can also the term is 42. Next term. Next term is 42. Okay, so you have this. Right, determine the nth term of the sequence. Right, what is the nth term of the sequence? So it's easy. We start by saying 2a is equal to 6. Okay, if 2a equals 6, we divide both left and right by 2 and we get 3. The next thing is so we say 3a plus b is equal to, so 3a plus b must be equal to this here. So um, we say that 3a plus b is equal to 1. Okay, hey, so if 3 plus b, but a, you already know, a is 3 plus b equals 1, which means b is what? Which means b is uh, um, minus 8. Okay, and then now 
the next thing is um the following right so we say a plus b for the quadratic uh, sequence uh, a plus b plus c is equal to two the first term of the quadratic sequence what did you know that a is three b is minus uh, eight uh, equals two and then when you continue um here what do we achieve right we're able to see that this is a sequels c equals what is three minus eight is minus five and then you add it is equal to seven so what is the nth term of the sequence So, the nth term of the sequence is given by the following right so the nth term of the sequence is given by tn which is equal to um well the formula is that a n squared plus b n plus c so, which means uh, Tn is A. What is A? 3. And squared uh, the B is that, and the C is that. Okay. So, this one is the nth term of the sequence. All right. So, to test the fact that the nth term is correct, you can uh, do, uh, generate the original sequence again by replacing n by 1, and you get the first term 2, and n by 2, you get 3, and so on. Okay, I'll uh, calculate the 20th uh, term of the sequence. Right, so now uh, in 2.1.3, you need to calculate the 20th term of the sequence. So now, which is uh, 3 into 20 squared minus a 20 plus 7, which is t 20. Use the calculator here. This is going to be 1047. So which means the 20th term is exactly 1047. Right, so we look at the next one, which is 2.2. Um, Given the arithmetic sequence, this one calculate which term of the sequence will have the value that. Right, so we have an arithmetic sequence. What is the arithmetic sequence? It is 35, it is uh, 28, and it is uh, 21. All right, so that's what we're getting. And this is the arithmetic sequence. Right, if this is the arithmetic sequence, uh, we can be able to get uh, the difference. Okay, what is 28 uh, minus uh, 35? Uh, we can see that it is minus 7. And then if you say 21 minus 28, we can see it is minus 7, which means um, the common difference is exactly um, minus 7. The first term of the sequence is 35. So, which means therefore Tn is a plus n minus one into the common difference d. Tn equals, what is the first term? It is 35 plus n minus one into the common difference d, which is minus seven. So Tn is 35 minus seven that plus that. So, which means this is minus seven n plus 42. Right, so uh, calculate the which term of the sequence will have the value of these. So now you are saying you have minus 7n plus 42. You see, this term is going to have the value minus 140, which is minus 182. Okay, you transpose the minus 42. And then now you divide it through by minus seven and the result is exactly 26. So they say to uh, calculate which term of the sequence will have the value minus uh, 140. So the term of the sequence that will have that value is exactly my is exactly 26. There. Term number 26 will have the value minus 140. 2.3. Right, so you continue look at two and three. Um, for which value of n will the sum of the first n terms of the quadratic sequence in question two point two be equal to the nth term of the quadratic sequence in question two point one? Yeah, for which value of n will the sum of the first n terms of the arithmetic sequence in two point two? All right, so we are looking at um the value of n, um for which um the sum of the first n terms of the arithmetic sequence in question 2.2, which is this one, 
um, will be equal to the nth term of the quadratic sequence in, in question 2.1. Okay, so um, that's easy. So um, you're just equating um, the two there. But now note that you are dealing with uh, the arithmetic case. Right, so um, and you're dealing with the sums. Okay, right. Uh huh. So what do we do? First, we need to realize that for which value of n will the sum of the first in terms of the arithmetic sequence. So now we are dealing with uh, the arithmetic sequence and the first n terms. So one way to deal with the arithmetic sequence, if you know already um, the nth term of the arithmetic sequence, so we'll say this one is n over two into a plus l. Um, so now what is this? Okay, the first term is 35 minus, what is the last term? Is minus seven n plus 42. Okay, so this is s n equals, okay, I use the last term formula. So it is exactly n over two into, and then here you have minus seven n, and then you have plus 77. Okay. We go on and on. <laughs> All right, if you distribute here, you'd have minus uh, this one over two plus 77n over two, which means it is minus that over two plus 77n over two, which means it is three uh, n squared uh, minus eight n plus seven. Hey, you uh, add everything here, and this is exactly 13n squared minus 93n plus 14 is equal to zero. So you have n minus seven, and then you have 13n minus two, which means n equals seven or n equals two over 13, okay? So this is not applicable. Okay. Yes, my dear. All right, my dear. Which one? All right, that's fine, my dear. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right, my dear. All right, my dear. Okay, so I'm right back now. I'll just speaking to someone. Um, so we are going on with the discussion and we are solving more problems. So um, they said for which uh, value of n will the sum of the first n terms. So we determined the sum of the first n terms and now we are saying here is the sum of the first n terms. Um, we um, will such that it will be equal to the nth term of the quadratic. So we have the nth term of the quadratic. This is the nth term of the quadratic. And the sum is equal to the nth term of the quadratic. And we determined that obviously this is not applicable because um, the number of terms cannot be two over 13. The number of terms, if you say count the number of people, by and large, the number of people must be a whole number. You might say the number of people in the class, number of learners in the class is seven. So there are seven learners in the class. And we that's what we need to say. So we do not just, um, get a fraction and say there are two by 13 learners in the in the class. We, we do not uh, normally have that kind of a situation. Um, right, okay. You can hear me, right? <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, I can hear you. <laughs> Thank you. Because I need to confirm sometimes, okay? Because now, when I check the recordings, I need to just make sure that because if you can hear me, then it means the sound is being recorded because sometimes you might not really be able to know if there's something wrong. Maybe the sound is not going through. Okay, here we're given a geometric what? A geometric um, series with, with, um, has a constant ratio, one half, and the sum to infinity is six. 
Right. Calculate the first term of the series. Right. So let's find the first term of the series here. Uh, very, very, very straightforward. Right. We've been given that the constant ratio is one two, is, 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 is actually one half. And the sum to infinity is six, which means the sum to infinity is that. Right, so the sum to infinity is that. What is the first term? One, um, and the common ratio is that. So what is this? Well, you can write it like this here. One minus one half is one half. You can you multiply it through here and you get these, which means A is what? A is three. So we have A is three. Right, so now calculate the first term of this series. Okay, now here you need to calculate the eighth term of this series. What is the eighth term of this series? Right, so now we found the first term. The first term is A and we found that the first term is three uh, using the sum to infinity formula. Now in uh, the next one, we're looking at 3.2. Um, right, in 3.2, calculate the eighth term of the series. And um, right, well, that's what we want, the eighth term of the series. So the eighth term of the series, we use the formula AR to the N minus one. So we are interested in the eighth term, but uh, we know very well that uh, the first term is what? The first term is three, we've already called that. The constant ratio is one half and it is raised to two, um, right, um, eight minus one. So, which means uh, T8 is three into one half to the seventh power. Okay, we use a calculator to, um, to do the rest of this, which means now T8 is this. What is this? Uh, is exactly three over one to eight. That's the answer. Okay. Um, right, so, um, Um, right, so which means that the eighth term is uh, the eighth term is three out of one to eight. All right, so we continue and we look at the next thing. Um, right, so we're going to look at the 3.3. Uh, 3. Given this summation, calculate the value of n. <laughs> What do we do? Right, we've given this uh, series and need to find the value of n. And how do we <clears throat> go about this? Right, let's uh, start, get started. So this would be the sum to n terms. <clears throat> so you have the sum to n terms. And then the sum to n terms is three into two raised to one minus k, which is five comma one eight, um, five comma eight one two five. All right, so let's do this now. So we do the substitution, we expand this summation, which has been given in sigma notation. If you put k equals one, this is gonna be three into that, uh, one minus one. Three into two, you have two, uh, one minus two. Uh, yes, one minus two. And then you have uh, one minus three. Okay. Which is five comma eight one two five. This is exactly three plus uh, three over two. Plus three over four plus dot 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 equals uh, five comma eight one two five. Right, so you can find the geometric sum um, to n terms. Right, we have written this summation out and then we can find the summation. Okay, the geometric series formula says that here you have one minus r to the n and you divide it by 
uh, 1 minus r, and this is exactly the same as 5,8125. Right, so this, uh, we substitute everything. What is the first term? Well, the first term can be clearly seen in the original, and this is the first term. So the first term is 3 into 1 minus, uh, right, what is the common ratio? So the common ratio is one half and you raise it to the power n divided by one minus one half, which is five comma eight one two five. Right, so we're gonna one minus one half in the denominator would be half. You multiply two by uh, the three by the two that is gonna come from the half in the denominator, giving us six. Okay, one minus one half. Okay, and this is this, 5,8125. Right, so what is this? Um, right, so this is that. Um, right, so this is 1 over 32. Um, right, so if you... Simplify everything, you divide through by six, you make a, a one half to the power e and uh, the subject of the equation, this is what you get. You can remove this. So that uh, you write the following and say, um, right, it is exactly that there. Okay, okay. And then this can be written as, 2 to the minus n is 2 to the minus minus 5, uh, which clearly means n equals 5 here. Um, alternatively, you can use the log. Okay, if you use the log, it is n the log of 1 half equals the log of 132. So this is five. Right, so you'd see that this is the case. Okay, so you'd see that n equals what? n equals five. All right, so let's continue and do the next one. Um, we found they were find the value of n, and you can see that the value of n is n equal 5. Here. Right, so now here we do this one. If this summation is p, write down these in terms of p for three marks. So we're looking at 3.4. So here you have 20 into the sum of k equals 1. k equals p. OK, so right, you have been given that this equals p. Write down these in terms of p, this summation in terms of um, okay, we have been given that these equals p, so which means that this one, we have already expanded it uh, from the previous question. It became 3 plus 3 over 2 from the previous question. Um, when k is 1 in the beginning, it becomes 3. When k is 2, it becomes 3 over 2. Uh, when k is 3, it becomes 3 quarters. And then we add everything. And then we have a 3, 2, and then when 20, we have minus 19. So now you have the summation here. Which means you have 24, this one. We have 24. 2 to the minus k. Okay, that's the one they gave. 
right? You substitute k equals one, it gives 12. When k equals two, you'd divide 24 by four. And that gives six. When k is three, you have three plus, and then you have 24, which is two to the minus 20. Uh, which is three plus, you effect out four, and then you have three over two, and then you have three over four, and then you have three times, and then you have two to the minus 19. Okay. So you can see that the three here, yeah. Three plus three over two plus three quarters plus dot 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 plus three times two to the power of minus nineteen is equal to p. So this is exactly four p, right? So we've written the summation in terms of p. So the conclusion can therefore be, if one wishes to, you can write it as follows, and then say this summation here. Okay, this finite sum. Is a finite series, and it is 24 to the minus k. This is equal to 4p. We have written this sum and sigma notation in terms of p. All right, we're recapping on some of this, and now maybe we get to something interesting a little bit um, to you, what we call the graphs and functions, but we're looking at inverse functions in the fourth question. Okay. Right, 4.1. Okay, so let's read the question to familiarize ourselves with the question. In the uh, in the diagram below, the graph of f of x equals ax squared is drawn um, in the interval x less or equal to zero. Yes, please. You, you can hear me, right? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. <laughs> right, so the graph of the f inverse, right, so the graph of the f, f inverse is given, here it is, and the graph of f is that one is also drawn. You have P with the coordinates uh, minus six and uh, minus 12 is a point on F, right? So on the function F, you have the point P and R is a point on the inverse there, okay. Right, so is F inverse a function? Motivate your R and um, Is F inverse a function? F inverse is this one. Now we're asking the question, um, is it a function? Well, the answer is yes. Uh, why? Um, you can say that for every for every x value, there is only one one corresponding y value y value. Right, and or you can say alternatively, it is a a one to one mapping a one to one mapping or you can say the vertical line test. Okay, it is a, a, the vertical line test says so that any vertical line cut it once. If the vertical line, any vertical line cuts the graph only once, um, then we say that, fun that function is a one-to-one -one mapping or it actually uh, passes the vertical line, right? The vertical line test. Okay. Yes, so if it passes the vertical line test, then it means that it is it is a function. So yes, we have a function there. So the f inverse is a function. Let's look at the next question. Right, in the next question, is r um, a reflection of p in the line, or oh, if r is the reflection of p in the line y equals x, write down the coordinates of, of r. All right, let's look at that one. Right, so if you look at 4.2, 
Right, so let me just clean up a little bit here. Uh, this has become too untidy and too many markings on it. All right, so we're asking the question, if R is the reflection of P, okay, here is P, right? But now we're seeing another point, R is the reflection of P in the line Y equals at. Right, so now this is very, very interesting. Write down the coordinates of R. Right, so the coordinates of R will be very easy. Reflections in the line Y equals X, um, they just switch their coordinates. So now you'd have the coordinates. Uh, you have the coordinates of P, which are minus six and minus 12. And then the coordinates of R is minus 12 minus what? Minus 12 minus, uh, minus six there. So you just switch around the coordinates of P to obtain the reflection in the line Y equals x, the line y equals x. Okay, now let's continue. And we look at the next question, right? And obviously the next thing is we're gonna be look, foc focusing on 4.3. Um, calculate the value of a, 4.3. We're looking at the value of a. Okay, what is the value of a? Right, so the value of a can be obtained uh, with ease because we have uh, the function, um, a point on f. We have a point on f because this is f. And then we have the point there. So you can use that point to find the value there. Right, so now we write the answer as follows. f of x is ax squared. Substitute minus six minus twelve. Okay, minus six minus twelve x and y. Okay, so we we good. So which means that um, at this point uh, you have that your y is minus twelve, and your x is minus six, and you square that. Right, so which is uh, minus 12, you square the six, you get a 36, which means it's minus 12 over 36, which is minus one over three. Um, right, so for the three, I think the value of A is that. Write down the equation of F inverse in the form Y equals something. 4.4. Right, so the equation of f inverse in the form that. So we're going to start by saying the, the graph of f, this is how you deal with finding the inverses all the time in metric. So we're going to be really looking at this in the trial. So f, the graph of f is what? Okay, we've already seen uh, the graph of f because we've already found a, and the graph of f is what? It is y equals ax squared. So a is minus one third x squared. Now, if you have something you need, what is the inverse? Right, so the inverse is uh, this one here. It is x minus one third y squared. So you have y squared minus three x. So which means y is plus or minus the square root of minus three x. Okay, so you make y the subject of the equation. But obviously this one is on the negative side because x is negative there. So which means therefore we're gonna choose only can say, we're gonna say only y is the negative square root. And x is less equal to zero. Okay. x is less equal to zero. 
Now let's continue. So we have uh, written the graph of the inverse in the form y equals something. And we have answered the question. Right, the next thing is uh, we look at another question on graphs and functions. Question five. Let's look at 5.1. Write down the domain of this, f of x. Write down the domain of f. Right, so to write down the domain here, we say the domain of this function, it always contains real numbers, x is an element of real numbers, but x is not one because uh, uh, that you, you just uh, x is not one. You say um, x minus one, the denominator is not zero. And then this means that x is not one. So the, the, the domain contains all x, um, which are elements of the set of real numbers, um, such that x is not one. If we don't want to say that for the domain, um, you can say x is an element of the interval minus infinity to one union one to infinity, right? So union one to infinity, that's what you get. Right, so we found the domain. The next question is we well, want to write down the asymptotes of F. What are the asymptotes of F? So the uh, every rectangular hyperbola, every hyperbola has two asymptotes. Let's look at this one, 5.2. Right, if the function f of x is minus one divided by what? Divided by x minus one. The asymptotes uh, come uh, from the bottom. So for the vertical asymptote, right, the vertical asymptote, and then you, you have the horizontal asymptote. Right, the horizontal asymptote. Uh, the vertical asymptote will be, you take the denominator and say x minus one equals zero, which means x is one. For the other one, uh, the horizontal asymptote, you take y equals zero. The, this one, y equals zero. So you have y equals one. Okay, now we have this. Okay, so we have the horizontal, uh, the vertical asymptote x equals one, the horizontal asymptote y equals zero. Okay, because there's no constant here, so y is zero. 5.3, sketch a graph of f, uh, clearly showing all the intercepts with the axis and any asymptotes. Let's look at that one. 5.3. Um, sketch a graph of F clearly showing all intercepts to the axis and any asymptotes. Okay, let's continue with this one. Easy. Right, so you're gonna draw the vertical axis and then the horizontal axis. The vertical is called Y and the horizontal is called what? It's called the X axis. We have already seen that the vertical asymptote is what? The vertical asymptote is uh, x equal to one. So now we're gonna just uh, put that one and say x is one there. Okay, need to just make a dashed line. That is not so untidy. All right, so, but it is a uh, through x equals one. And then the other one is y equals zero. So y equals zero is the x-axis. The equation, the line whose equation is y equals zero is the x-axis. So this one is y equals zero, is the x-axis. So negative, you need intercept with the x's. Right, so you need to find the x-intercept here, or at least the y-intercept. Okay, let's find the y-intercept. 
Uh, let's find the y intercept. Right. Um, right. So the y intercept. Okay, what is the y-intercept? So you can make x zero. Okay, so now you have f of x, which equals to minus one divided by x minus one. So this is zero, which is minus zero minus one, which is one. So you have one, right? So this is the graph is going to do this. Graph is going to do this. If the graph does that, the other one is going to be on the other side. Right, it's not going to touch the asymptote, which is there. So it's just going to be here like this. So the, these graphs are always uh, um, that way. So it is something to note here. Um, it is the fact that at this point, if you have a, um, a hyperbola graph that's um, a divided by x minus p plus q. The plus q is normal outside. Right, uh, plus q like this. If the number a is positive in the numerator, then it means that your graph is going to be what? It's going to be on the positive and like this. Otherwise, your graph is going to be um, here and there. Where a is negative, a negative is the number on top. But obviously here, we can see that a is minus 1. So a is minus 1, automatically we know that the graph is going to be in the second quadrant and the fourth. If this quadrant here is the first, the second, the third, and the fourth quadrants. All right, so we have sketched this uh, showing all intercepts with the axis. We have shown there's only one intercept with the axis because the student can try to find the x intercept. Okay. Um, how do you find the x intercept? To find the x intercept, you can try to do that, but you can see that it's not there. Okay, this is just extra. If the student says, okay, what is the x intercept of f? What will they get? So you let y be zero, which is minus one. When y is zero, you have this. You cross multiply and you have zero is equal to minus one. This is not true because zero is not equal to minus one. So it means that this graph, because of this, this graph has no x-intercept. Okay. So let's sketch a graph showing um, the clearly the intercept axis and any asymptotes. For which values of x will this be greater or equal to zero? 5.4. For which values of x will this be greater or equal to zero? Right, for which values of x will this be greater or equal to zero? Let's look at this question. It's a very interesting one. So now we are saying here x times the first derivative of f is greater or equal to zero. <laughs> Right, a very interesting question, but slightly tricky. So you need to be very careful here. A couple of things you need to remember, you need to look at the slope of this function because f prime relates to the gradient of the function. But now uh, at the back of the mind, uh, you need to realize uh, that this is, is gonna cut at one. Like this. Okay, so what do you need here? What do you need? Right, it's gonna cut three to one. But we're saying here, we're multiplying two numbers. So, and you're getting a positive. So you must have a positive multiplied by a positive to get a, a, 
a greater or equal to zero, or you must have a negative times another negative to have uh, a greater or equal to zero, at least uh, greater than zero. Okay, the signs must be the same. Now, so let's continue. What do we have? So what do we have? We have the following. So when is, so you must have that X is positive. In the first case, you must have that X is positive. So X is positive here. Okay, you must have that X is positive there. But obviously the slope is positive. Right. So where is that the case? So in other words, um, we can see that it's when x is greater or equal to zero, because immediately when we move like this, x is positive everywhere, and the slope is going, the function is sloping up, okay? But also here, the function is also sloping up. So in other words, uh, x must be greater or equal to zero, but not one. Right, so there's a couple of ways uh, to write this one, okay? Or oh, another student can say the slope is critical to zero when zero is critical to x. So zero to one Union one to infinity. So you can also say zero to one included, but one is an, an, an asymptote. So it is such that the function itself is what is undefined. Okay, so we continue. So you continue. Right. Now let's look at the next question, um, five point, question six. Right, so question six is very interesting and easy. Right, question six. Um, the diagram below, in the diagram below, you have A and B are uh, the intercepts with, um, of the graph of f in the straight line g through a cuts f at c and the y-axis at 0, 1. m is the point on f. Where is the m now? n is a point on g. Here is n on the function g such that mn is parallel to the y-axis. Okay, mn is actually parallel to the y-axis. Right, mn cuts the x-axis at t. There it is. So you have question six. Right, you have 6.1. Show that the g of x is equal to x plus 1. Show that g of x is equal to x plus 1. Right, let's look at this one. Very easy. How do you show that? Well, you need to find just the slope of this. So um, you can find the slope of g, the g function. So you can take um, the two points on G, this point and that one. So you can have like this. Right, so the point one is uh, zero one, four five. So X one, Y one, X two, Y two. So the gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. What is y2? It is 5. y1, 1. x2 is 4. x1 is 0. 
What is five minus one? It's exactly four. Four, four is one. Okay. Meaning that um, M is one, but C is the Y intercept. So C is already one. So you can use the equation that says MX plus C because M is one by X, the C is one. And therefore the equation is X plus one, All right? So the equation is Y equals X plus one. Right, calculate the coordinates of A and B. So these are the intercepts of the axis, so you can easily find the x-intercepts. There of this one of the parabola function whose equation is there, so that's very easy, 6.2. Right, so in 6.2 now, you find the x-intercept. Right, so if you find the x-intercepts, how do you find the x-intercepts? Uh, you let y be zero. So this is x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Because of x squared, x and x, this is minus 3 plus 1, which means x is 3, so x is minus 1. So which means A has coordinates minus one zero, B has coordinates three and zero. Okay. So now so we have six point um three. Okay. Now in 6.3, you have, um, you need to find, determine the range of F. Right, you determine the range of F. So to find the range of F, there are a couple of things you need to look into. You already know that the coordinates are minus one and zero of A and the coordinates of B are three and zero. And the graph of the function, the equation of the um, of the function is x squared minus two x minus three, which is minus b over two a, which is minus into minus two over two one. Two over two is one. So if x equals one. So we just need to get the y value for that. So which means uh, you get y at mm, f at one. Can even use a different color for that. Which means f at one, which is one squared minus two into one minus three, which is one minus five, which is minus four. What is the range if at this point here you have that x is one because we are dealing with uh, the range is, is associated with the turning point of the function here. Sorry, x is one and y is minus four. So now we are beginning from here and we're going up. So which means therefore at this point we say that y must be greater or equal to minus, minus four. What is 6 .4? Where does the minus 4 come from? <laughs> okay, that's a good question. The minus 4 comes from the y value because we found f at um, the value of the function f at 1. Right, we remember that the function itself has the equation, the function f has the equation, what? It is the equation, this one here. Is the equation x squared minus 2x minus 3. But we substitute the x value of the turning point, substituting 1 into this. So we substitute 1 into that. And obviously, substitute 1 into f of x, which is equal to what? 
x squared minus 2x minus 3. If we plug in x equal to 1, we have 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3, and you get minus 4. So this is the turning point of the function. So the function is going to start from the turning point and go up, right? So how do you say it's going to start from the turning point? We say it is y is equal to minus 4 at the turning point, but it goes higher. So it's greater or equal to minus 4, this y. is greater because it goes higher, but it is equal to minus 4 at the turning point. So there are two things. So y is, is equal to minus 4 at the turning point, but it's greater because the function goes greater. It goes higher and higher and higher. It goes to infinity. Right, so that's what you can say. And this gives us the what? This gives us the range. If you don't give the range like this, how, how else do you state the range? So you can also say y is an element of the interval from minus four to what? To infinity. Um, so yeah, <laughs> you say from minus four and then you go to infinity, right? You put a round bracket like that. So it's another way of writing. Either you write the red one or the black one. Um, they just agree with each other. Now let's look at 6.4 now. Because you are saying here, if mn6 determine the length of OT, um, okay, the length of OT, if T lies on the negative x-axis, show all your work in. 6.4.1. Okay, if mn6 determine the length of OT, if T lies on the negative x-axis, Show all you're working. Okay, let's look at this one quickly. Richard, too many things. Let me just tidy it up. Tidy the diagram up a little bit. If mn is 6, determine the length of OT. Here is O and here is T. Determine the length of OT if T lies on the negative x-axis. Here is T. It is on the negative x-axis because x is negative this side, but x is positive this side. Show all your working. Right. So this is easy. A little trick. So you need to realize that at this in this question um, you are interested in m n. So m n. So m n is going to be the difference between the two functions. Or so we say that m n is going to be the upper curve minus the lower curve. What is the upper curve? x squared minus 2x minus 3. What is lower curve? Is the straight line graph. Is the lower curve. The straight line graph is the lower curve. And it's sitting at x plus 1. Which is x squared minus 3x minus 4. Right, we already said that mn is 6 units, so the difference between these ones is 6, must be 6. This is x squared minus 3x minus 4. And then we have x squared minus 3x minus 10. Which means 0 is what? And then here you have x and x, and then you have minus 5 plus 2, which means x is 5 or x is minus 2. Right, so what is OT now? OT. So obviously, right, it means that OT is. 2 or OT is 5. Right, so uh, we can see therefore that the OT 
um, equals five is not applicable. Is not applicable. The OT equals five is not applicable and therefore OT can only be two units. Only two units. Well, two units because we know the coordinates of A are minus one and zero. And therefore this is just a little bit extra, so it is at minus two, making OT two units. Making OT two units. All right. Okay, now hence uh, write down the coordinates of N. Okay. Right. And write down the coordinates of n. Let's look at 6.4.2. Right. What are the coordinates of n? Right. So the coordinates of n right now are straightforward. We know that n lies on the line y equals x plus 1. And we're going to substitute x equals 2, you know, right negative 2. I'm going to substitute x equals negative 2 because that's what it is. So you have y equals um, x is negative 2 and y is minus 1. That's the answer. OK. <sighs> So the coordinates of the coordinates of n are minus two and one because x already is minus two there, and then we just got y equal to minus one. Right. So the next thing is now we're gonna do um, six point five. Uh, determine the equation of the tangent to f drawn parallel to g. Okay, the equation of the tangent to f drawn parallel to g. The equation of the tangent to f drawn parallel to g. So a tangent to f that's drawn parallel to g is a tangent to f, so it's going to touch f at one point, but it is parallel to g. So this is the sort of situation we're talking about here. So, what do we do now in six point in six point five? Well, let's do it. Okay, so now you have that you can find the derivative of this because we are finding the slope of a tangent to the function f. So we must find the derivative. The derivative of x squared becomes 2x. The derivative of minus 2x becomes minus 2, minus 3 is 0, and therefore has derivative 0. Right, so which means that uh, minus 2x minus 2, the slope of these is 1. <laughs> Parallel to G because G has the slope one. Here is G, show that G is as as the equation x plus one. So G is is x plus one, so it has a gradient of one. Since G has a gradient of one, it means that um the the M is one. So, which means 2x is 3, which means x is 3 over 2. Okay, if that is the case, 
um, you got that um, it, this happens. So in other words, the gradient of the gradient of f is equal to the gradient of what of g um, of f equal to the gradient of g at x equal to three over two. And then now you have this one f, which is three over two, which is three over two. Three over two minus that. And therefore, which is three over two. What is the answer? Is minus 15 over four. Okay, you do everything, you got minus 15 over four. Okay, if this is true, we can find uh, the equation of the tangent because now you got that the tangent is gonna uh, be par to G. Par to G means you can use any of these uh, formulae, right? You can use Y minus Y1 is M into X minus X1. You can use this one to find the equation of the tangent for Y minus, what is the Y? So you, sub you subtract everything or you put a minus 15 over four, uh, the slope of the tangent because it's parallel to G and G has gradient one. So you put one here, uh, right into X minus X1. What is X1? It is three over two. So what is the answer? What is the answer? Well, the answer is the following. is minus 21 over four. That's the answer, minus 21 over four. Minus 21 over four. Over four. All right, so that's 6.5. 6 6.6, 6. so which values of K will F of X and H not intersect? But which values of k will these two functions not intersect? One mark. Right, so now you can look at this and think. But which values of k will f and h not intersect? Right, so the couple of things you need to look at here, so you can use any of the results, but if they do not intersect, it really can mean non-real roots. Right, so for one mark, it's easy. Right, so you are looking at the two functions, f of x, which equals the, this one, and g equals that, and h equals that. But the age now is, the tangent is gonna have the equation what? It's gonna have the equation x minus 21 over four. So the k um, in age, right, so the k is what? Minus 21 over four, the tangent is there. So if you, Either temper with this, with this one. You temper with this one. If you move it down, they'd not intersect. So if you can move this straight line down, then it's not gonna touch F. It won't touch F, the green one doesn't touch F because we moved the red one down. So how do you say you moved it down? So you say K must be what? K must be less than minus 21, uh, 21 over four. So if K is less than minus 21 over four, then it means that you moved it down and that is answer. You can use land real roots. Yeah, as well, but it's just one mark. So it's not a big deal. 
Okay, I want us to do some finance now. Question seven. Right, so in question seven, we're gonna look at Selby. Selby decided today that he will save 15,000. Selby decided today that he will save 15,000 per quarter over the next four years. He will make the first deposit into the savings account in three months time. And he will make his last deposit at the end of four years um, from now. How much will Selby have at the end of four years? If interest is end at 8.8% .8 per annum and these things are compounded quarterly, which means F is X into one plus I to the N. So now X, this guy Selby is depositing 15,000 into one plus. Okay, divide by 100, which is zero comma, 0 0.088, divided by four, um, over the next four years, but it's quarterly. So you may say the four years by four minus one, you divide everything by I, which is 0, 0.088, <coughs> divided by four. Okay, so we continue and we use our calculators. So we think how much will Selby have at the end of the four years? So Selby is gonna have 283. 283,972,28 cents. That's what Selby is going to have altogether at the end of the four years. But in 7.1.2, if Selby decides to withdraw 100,000 from the account at the end of three years from now, he decides to withdraw 100,000 at the end of three years from now, how much will he have in the account at the end of four years from now. Right, let's look at this. So in 7.1.2. Right, so in 7.1.2, Selby decides to take the amount of money 238. 283. So he decides to take the 283,972,28 minus 100,000. 100,000. 1 plus 0, 088 over 4. And you raise it to the power four, which means A equals. Right. So he withdraw he withdrew what? Um if Telby decides to withdraw um one hundred thousand from the account at the end of three years from now. Okay. How much will you have in the account at the end of four years from now? At the end of four years from now, this is the amount that's going to be there. And we are subtracting 100,000 that withdraws three years from now. So three years from now, is going to be left with one year to the end of this. For one year, therefore, it's going to be, you put a, a four here for one year. Okay, one year, you subtract one year. So, because it's at the end of the three years. So I'm gonna look at a timeline uh, to explain this. So that's 174, 877, comma six zero, comma six zero. So we have this, we have exactly that one. 
okay, there are many ways to do that, but yeah, that's what. So you can look at a timeline like this and say, there's time zero, there's time one, there's time two. It's four years and we're dealing with quarters. So time three is another quarter uh, and so on. In the end of four years, then you're going to have 16 quarters, 15 quarters here. Um, what is it? 14 quarters and so on and more. Right, so and then at the end, okay, so in the four years, it's going to have 2, 8, 3, 9, 7, 2, comma, 2, 8 in the end of the four years. But now three years would be what? So three years from now, it would be obviously um, a quarter towards the end. So in other words, uh, you're going to be here. Okay, so this is going to be three years. Okay, because in three years, uh, you're going to be left with... Um, Okay, just to check that carefully. You need to say three years. I'm just uh, trying to use this. So you need to say three years. So three by four, it's 12. Right, so three by four is 12. So uh, this would mean um, you'd be having um, 12 quarters. 12 quarters. Right, so 12 quarters. And then now, uh, you'll be left with what? Right. Um, so you'll be left with a total of how many quarters? A total of four quarters towards the end of the year. Right. So if you're left with a total of four quarters, so in other words, you'll be at approximately, yes. So you'll be at T12. So now this is T13. And then this is T12. And then at T12, it's going to be three years. Right. Sorry, but yeah. Okay. And then you're going to be left with um, a total of uh, um, what? A total of four quarters. Total of four quarters. Right. So you're going to have that. Just try to think of this. Right. In 7.2, Tepo takes out a loan, um, takes out a home loan over 20 years to buy a house. That costs um, 1.5 million. Okay. In 7.2.1, calculate the monthly installment if the interest is charged at 10,5% per annum. And this is compounded monthly. Let's look at that. 7.2. Right, so if Tepo takes out this home loan over 20 years and to buy a house that costs 1.5 million, calculate the monthly installment as interest charge. So you are dealing with present value, so it is x into 1 minus 1 plus i to the minus n all over, all over i. So this is 1.5 million. x into... Zero comma one zero five divided by twelve. Okay, um, so it's compounded, compounded monthly. So there are twelve months in a year by twenty. Twelve months in a year by twenty, and then it is divided by what? It divided by zero comma one zero five divided by 12. So which means that um, X is 49.975,70. So they said how 
calculate the monthly installments, so the monthly installments will be exactly 14,972.70 cents. 7.2.2. Calculate the outstanding balance immediately after the 444th payment was made. Calculate the outstanding balance immediately after the 144th payment was, was made. Okay, so we continue. Right, so in 7.2.2, calculate the outstanding balance immediately after the 144th payment was made. So to calculate the balance after the 144th payment was made, the easiest way is to use the present value, which says x into x into minus n, you divide by i. The present value is forty nine seven five comma seven zero one minus which is minus twelve by eight. which is 0, 0,105 divided by 12. Which is 969. 969. 9 to 7. Okay, so this is it. The present value is going to be exactly this one. Which is the outstanding balance, right? But the outstanding balance can also be done differently after the 144th payment was made. You can do it like this, or alternatively, the outstanding balance can be done as saying, so we say that the balance outstanding, the balance outstanding, is equal to A minus F. What is A? A is going to be the, the sort of the final amount. If this is 1.5 million, one plus 0 0.105 divided by 12. And then you have 144. And then you subtract from it 14. 975, 70. 1 plus 0, 0,105. 144 minus 1. You divide by. 0, 0,105, you divide by 12. Right, so the balance of setting therefore would be 1.5 million multiplied by that. So this is gonna be 5259, 229, 61 minus, um, Four two eight nine three zero two comma four seven. You multiply everything, and this is nine six nine nine seven two is nine nine seven nine two seven nine six nine. Nine two seven nine 
Okay. Right, so this is the outstanding balance, or it is um, this, or you can use the other the other approach. Okay, so you have, uh, you are spoiled for choice here. So you can use any of the methods. Okay, right, the next thing now is gonna, we're gonna do calculus. Yes, right. Determine if primed from first principles, if this is true. That's a good question, eight. Right, so question eight. Right, so in 8.1, the first principles are very easy. So you need to use the first principles formula. So which means f prime of x is the limit as h approaches zero. x plus h minus f of x all over h. If prime is the limit as h tends to zero. Okay, what is f? into x plus h. Right, so this is gonna be x plus h squared because the function is this one, minus five. The function f of x is x squared minus five. But you replace x squared by just x plus h. And then you square it, uh, you divide by h. So this is f primed of x. The limit as h tends to zero, h approaches zero, you square this. This one use the FOIL method. So you square x, x times h times two is two x h. You square h, you have h squared, you minus five, you minus x squared, you add five. You must distribute by the negative. Distribute by the negative, right, so you have this. Distribute by the negative. Plus five, and then you divide like this by h, which means h f primed. Okay. Okay. You have the limit. Okay, you put out h. H cancels, and then you have F prime of X, which is the limit as H approaches zero of two X plus H, and this is two X. This is exactly what? Two X. So that is the result. Okay, now the we have a little bit of derivatives to practice. Let's look at the derivatives, like 8.2.1, you have y equals 3x cubed plus 6x squared plus x minus 4, the derivative, dy dx. Right, three by three is gonna be nine x squared. Two by six is 12 x. The derivative of the x is one. The derivative of minus four is zero. We done with that one. So the next one, look at 8.2.2. Want to find the derivative of y x minus y, which is two uh, x squared uh, minus two x, uh, x is not one. So you pull out uh, this one, which is uh, 2x squared uh, minus 2x. Right, so you divide by the x minus one. So you have x minus one. 2x, which is x minus one, you divide by x minus one, which is 2x. So if y, is 2x, then what is the derivative? What is dy dx? The derivative of the x is one. So derivative of 2x is just two. 
Right. Um, we'll have two minutes before the time. We'll have two minutes before late trading happens. And there's no way I can finish this question in, in, in there's no way I can finish question nine in two minutes. <laughs> All right. So I think that I'll have to call it a very good evening because my lot chatting is just going to happen now at 10. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So thanks a lot then. We'll talk, but we'll have to meet again sometime this week. We'll see when. We'll discuss okay. it. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, but thanks a lot. Have a good evening. I'm going to post the video when the power comes back. It's going to come back like 12 midnight. So that's okay. I'm going to post the video. I'm going to send you the link to the video. Okay. Yeah. But thanks a lot. Have a good evening. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Then. Thanks. Goodbye, Waruna. Nice. Goodbye. Yes. Goodbye.